he and she was something I ideally loved the notion. Uh, I had a number of notions going then. I wanted to bring caring, loving, liking, literacy, and charm back to television. It was uh, slowly disappearing if it wasn't a complete erosion. And um, I was under contract to CBS then. And I said, I want to do a comedy of, 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 of caring. And they said, uh, with whom? I said, I don't know. Uh, they said, well, if you get Paul Apprentice, you got to go ahead. And I didn't know Paul Apprentice, and I figured, what are my chances of getting her? And I'm, uh, maybe I can network. Uh, and two nights later, I'm in a card game, and there's one stranger in our regular card game, and I'm turned, and we're talking, and what do you do? He said, I'm a personal manager. And I said, who are your clients? Of course, Paul Apprentice was one of them. That's why I will never give up cards. Um, well, he told Paula the idea, and I met with Paula, and she said, I love it, but uh, I want to work with my husband. And I said, who is your husband? And she said, Richard Benjamin. And miracle of miracles, I knew who he was because of my wife, Gloria. She had been in Chicago, seen him in uh, Bare Barefoot in the Park, and said, he called me and said, I saw your type of actor, a man named Richard Benjamin. Bid Dick had never done television and never done film. He'd just been in road companies of Neil Simon. So I said to Paul, that's all right. And then I called Mike Dan, who was then president of CBS, and said, Mike, I have Paul Apprentice. He said, you got a deal. And I said, wait a moment, there's a kicker. She wants to work with her husband. He said, that's okay. Now, how rare that is. So I signed Dick and Paula. I had them tell me everything I needed to know about their lives to write it down so I could start the screenplay. And about 10 days, I get a phone call wherever I, uh, to call Mike Dan. And wherever I go, there's the same message. And I keep trying to get him. I finally get him. And he said, Leonard, did you uh, sign... Uh, Paul Apprentice and her husband, did you make that deal? I said, yes. He said, is her husband an actor? They had no idea what he did, and they figured somebody finally said, what does he do? And, uh, but that was television in those days. They went with your instinct. They respected you. They had the ability to listen. Uh, they could envision. It wasn't this reliance on, uh, demographics, marketing, and research, the voodoo of our time. So anyway, there we were, and then I tailored the show to the two of them, and uh, we had a tremendous pilot, and I was able to attract the better writers who saw it, and that's how I met Alan Burns and Chris Hayward, Jim Brooks, uh, uh, Dave Davis, they all came aboard, and uh, Arnold Margolin and, and uh, Jim Parker. So we had a first-rate staff, and Arnie Sultan was there with me. He, he wrote the pilot with me. So he was the producer, and Jay Sandrich, I directed the pilot, and Jay came in and did all the rest of the episodes. So the same team at work, and the shock of cancellation, uh, it wasn't anticipated, and... I'm, I'm prideful about what happened uh, when it was first rumored the show was going to be canceled. Uh, people in the industry took out ads. Jerry Lewis took out a full-page ad protesting it. Um, Mike Nichols, Myrna Loy, um, Robert Ryan, uh, and uh, Don Adams and numerous others took out a, an ad on their own protesting cancellation. The Dallas Times Herald took an ad out in the New York Times protesting it. And ironically, when the Emmys came up, we received uh, three of, of the four nominations. And when the Writers Guild Awards came up, we received three of the four nominations. And uh, we won the, Alan Burns and Chris Haywood won the Emmy. And, the only, and we were beat out for the... Uh, writing award by Get Smart. Uh, but it, it was a show that was precedent-setting in many ways um, in the utilization of the camera, in the structure of the sets, 
It's very akin, and in, in, in our career, it's very akin to what you remember the Mary Tyler Moore show as being, and subsequent shows, and it should be, because everyone who worked for us, uh, we were in a two-story CBS building, and when we didn't sell any shows, everybody went upstairs and became MTM. And so it was just an extension of uh, the governor and JDA, another show we had done, and he and she.